once again, my name is Zachary Rosen, and this is Leading the Way to Wellness. Now, for those of you who may not know me, I am a current senior. I am heavily involved in the band program, where I am all of the vice president, a head section leader for the trumpet section, and I'm also the head quartermaster. Now, like I said, we are going to be Leading the Way to Wellness. But, how did I come up with this idea? Well, I'm going to take you back really quick to when this was first assigned to me as an assignment for my peer through peer counseling, and I was sitting there like, what can I actually talk on? So what happens is, now, like I said, I am a senior. How many other seniors are here? Right, there's a good amount of seniors, right? So as a senior, part of my um, advancement through life is uh, applying to college. So for the seniors that are here, I'm sorry, this might look like some PTSD, but this is what got me into making this TED Talk. For those of you who recognize it, this comes from the UC application, which is on leadership. I can see some people shaking their head at it. Juniors, that's you next year. Anyway, so this question, when I got to it, it got me really thinking, what does it mean to be a leader? How do I, myself, fit that role? And how can I help others learn to be as good of a leader as I think I can be? So that being said, we're going to be diving into these four things. The first thing being that leadership does not require a title. I'm also going to be going over my experiences as a leader, the core aspects of being a leader, and how it all relates to wellness. Now, quick disclaimer, I am only 17. I do not know everything. I have some experience, but not a ton. So this isn't exactly a step-by-step -step guide of, hey, this is how you be the perfect leader. It's more so my experiences that I'm telling to you guys so that you guys may learn from it and shape it in your own way. That being said, leadership versus leader. So a quick Google search will get you these two definitions right here. Leadership being the action of leading a group of people and leader being the title given to the person who leads or commands a group organization or country. Some of you might be asking, well, what's the difference? And as your English teachers will probably tell you, the answer lies in the wording. If we look at it, leadership says the action, leader says the title. The one thing that I can kind of equate this to is how many of you guys remember that one concept in math where it said a square can be a rectangle, but a rectangle cannot be a square? Does anyone remember that? Right? That is kind of the case here, in which leadership is the square where leadership and leader are basically one and the same, but a leader is cannot be, the title cannot be given unless that person displays leadership. So that is where this comes from. Moving on from that, uh, I will be diving into my personal experiences with leadership. So like I said, I'm heavily involved in the band program right now, but that didn't start my senior year, it started when I got here. Freshman year obviously was COVID, couldn't do much, but sophomore year is when I decided to kind of throw myself fully into band. I started off with just the aspiration of being a section leader, but as I was going through it, I noticed that the upper leadership, like the president, vice president, secretaries, felt kind of absent, felt like they weren't there, felt like it had some issues. Additionally, in my sophomore year, I also joined the quartermaster crew where the same issues were running rampant in a sense where the leadership there expected everyone to be independent, able to work independently without any need or help, but didn't actually give us any guidance on that. Going into junior year, I accomplished my initial goal of becoming a section leader for the trumpet section. But as a junior, I was overshadowed by two seniors with personally what I thought was the worst work ethic I have ever seen. They refused to actually try and make the section better. They kind of just had the title, did nothing with it, and that annoyed me. I was still a quartermaster at the time, and the same issues were still there where quartermasters were expected to act independently, but there was no actual guidance for that. So I set my sights to becoming a head quartermaster and the president of the band program so that I could make changes. Now, I am a senior. I unfortunately didn't get president, but I got put into the vice president role, which is, in my opinion, just as important, and I'll get to that later. I also, through my junior year, proved myself to be a, the caliber of a head quartermaster and became a head quartermaster as a senior as well. My responsibilities increased dramatically. I now have to worry about not only the marching band, but I also have to worry about the relating groups such as the break guard going later into their winter guard season. I had to worry about drumline, I had to worry about symphony orchestra, pit orchestra, all these different things as the vice president because those responsibilities were now placed onto me. 
But through this, I hope you guys will find out how I managed to deal with it. And from my experience, I have found that these four things are probably one, some of the best when it comes to being a really good leader. First of all, a leader is not a boss. I'll explain all of these, and I'll just go through them. The second being the ability to put your own personal feelings aside. Third being communication. And the fourth being commitment and dedication. So first, I don't know if you guys have seen this picture, but this sums it up really well. Do not be a boss as a leader. How many of you guys are in a, whether it be a club, whether it be a program, whether it be outside or volunteering or whatever, how many of you guys have been a part of a program where the leader would tell you to do something, so obviously you go do it because they're your leader, but then you turn around and you see them not doing what they said you should do? You can be honest, it's, no one's gonna know, right? So that's quite a bit of you. That is being a boss. And what that serves is honestly a detriment to your group. Because as you're telling other people to, hey, act like this or do it this certain way, but I don't have to, you prove to them that it's like, hey, I'm above all of you. I don't have to abide by my own rules. That doesn't turn into you being a leader, it turns you more into being a boss. And as a result, it can cause discourse within your group. The best way that I can say to do this is if you are in a leadership position, or even if you're not, because remember, being a leader doesn't mean you can't express leadership. You have to lead by example. That's the way you prove yourself. The next thing is you have to be able to set your personal feelings aside. Obviously, there are going to be people in your program that you do not want to deal with, and I have a personal story of this. Aside from being in band, I'm also in some leadership groups outside of school, and in one of those, there was this one guy, oh my god, I did not like him. Reason, reason being is, like those two senior section leaders that I was talking about, terrible work ethic, did not want to do work, made everyone around him uncomfortable, constantly pushed back, not only against me being a student leader, but also the actual directors, Basically, overall, not a great person. As a, as a person, I didn't want to deal with him at all. But I remember being taught where it's, hey, even though you don't like this person, in the end, being a leader is the group as a whole. If you have one weak link, you got to make sure that that doesn't cause you to fail. So what ended up happening is I decided, hey, even though I don't like this guy, I'm still going to like, I'm gonna take the higher road. I'm going to tell myself, hey, it's going to be okay, We're going to, I'm going to get through it. And I took him aside, I sat down top and made him realize what he was doing, okay? acting like that I'm there to support him, which you should be as a leader, and over time, he hasn't gotten much better, but it's starting to show. So that's why you should have to know how to set your personal feelings aside if you want to be successful as a leader. The third thing, communication. Now, like I told you, I have noticed that for being a leader, communication is really important. And I go back to me in sophomore, junior year with my uh, quartermasters. The quartermasters would say, hey, think on your own. Think on your own, figure out how to do it on your own, right? So I said, okay, I think this goes here. The second the leader saw it, he's like, why'd you put that there? It's supposed to go over here. There's no communication in that. Now, I will show you how I took that and now as a head quartermaster decided to change it. Recently, the marching band, we just have our competitive season last year, last semester, and we now have used a actual trailer that we haven't used since before the pandemic. That being said, I've never had to deal with that. The previous two years, I've been using a U-Haul. So this became a new experience for everyone. Me and the other two heads that are with me fell into that same pitfall of not having enough communication, telling everyone who was mainly comprised of sophomores and freshmen, hey, do it on your own, figure it out yourself. And whenever they didn't do something that we thought was supposed to be right, we yelled at them. I caught myself in this. I realized, hey, I'm not telling them what I need, what I need them to do. So what I did instead is, during, after one of the practices, I got all my quartermasters together, heads and the younger guys, and I asked everyone, hey, what do you need me as your head, as your leader, what do you need me to do in order to make sure that you all succeed? And what they told me is they wanted a list of all the things that needed to be loaded, where they had to be loaded, and ordered. So we made that. It is because of that list that when we went to one of our competitions, we ended up being parked 10, 15 feet from the judges stand, which is 
very stressful, and we were told by our director, hey, you have to unload as quickly and as silently as possible. That will forever be known by me and the rest of the QMs as the silent unloading as we had unloaded that entire U-Haul with all the equipment for both guard and band completely silently. And the reason why was through communication. The last thing, be committed and dedicated. As a leader, you are the face of your program. Everyone looks to you for guidance, everyone looks to you for answers. How many of you have a leader, wherever it may be, where they aren't as dedicated as you think they should be? Some people, all right. How many of you, those of you that do, how many of you think because of that it's okay not to be as dedicated because the leader isn't being dedicated, right? Again, this kind of ties into being a boss where it's, it just serves as a detriment. If, you're, if you show everyone else, hey, I'm not dedicated to this, I don't really care that I'm here and whatnot, everyone else is gonna realize, I don't gotta do this. If he doesn't have to do it, I don't have to do it. And again, it drags your group down and that's not what we want. Now, you may be wondering how this all relates to wellness, because like I said in the beginning, this is leading the way to wellness. Here are some aspects of social wellness. Social wellness being just your interpersonal skills and being able to engage with others. You got developing appropriate assertiveness and interpersonal skills. That comes from not being a boss. You got developing a sense of confidence to be your authentic self in all situations. That's just through being a leader, you're being put into these different situations. Like for me, having to unload silently, having to manage all these different pro like programs within the band program. You cannot be scared to do that. You have to develop that sense of confidence as a leader. Appropriately engages with other people of all ages and situations. That builds off of being able to put your personal feelings aside. If you have those negative feelings against the person and aren't willing to help them, you're not appropriately engaging with other people. And it's dependent on the situation. The last one being values, diversity, and treating others with respect. That comes from just being a leader, but also just making sure that you yourself are fit for your role as a leader, making sure that you incorporate all the three of the top things into that bottom one, and that what is what pushes you to be that successful leader. If I can leave you with one thing in this, it would be the best way to lead is to lead by example. Again, show your communication, show that you are dedicated, do not be a boss, and be able to put your personal feelings aside. Again, you are looked up to, everyone else will see that, so that means when you eventually vacate your leadership position, not only will the future be prepared to fill in your spot, but they'll also have the knowledge because they watched you to command all the future generations through your leadership. Thank you for listening.